So guys, it's actually been a week or two since the last video and last uh, shimming we were doing on this. Because I had to work through a couple of issues um, that I was having with the transmission and getting this shimming correctly. Um, so one of the things that I found was that to get it really accurate, you have to have it all attached like it is now. And you have to have on the back here, the uh, gear has to be on and you have to have the bolt and excuse me, the nut tightened up there. This draws the, um, this draws the uh, shaft backwards a little bit and when it does that you can accurately measure the gap that we have in here so unless this is all tightened up and the shaft is tightened up you can't accurately measure it um, I could get a good guess of how it was when I didn't have anything on the rear attached and it wasn't on here because I had the bearing pushed up hard against it um, but uh, it gave you an idea of how much shimming you needed but really unfortunately the only way to get it really correct is to have this attached and put the uh, gasket in and take it apart many many times um, backwards and forwards, tightening it up, putting it in. It's a really slow and laborious process. And I also had it once where I had it all, thought I had it all correct and done. Put uh, the gasket in, put sealant in there, made sure everything was sealed up. But then I hadn't put the nut on the back and the shaft had gone forward a little bit. Um, the bearing was he in here and the shaft had slid forward in a little bit. So it became extremely tight inside here and I couldn't work out what had gone wrong and I, I you know I thought well I've set up all this shimming and I've dry tested it loads of times how could this have lost all the clearance it had so I took it apart again and then realized my mistake back here so when you're going through this um, I think do the initial setup and getting an idea by just putting the bearing in the back then move on to attaching the transmission and tightening it up dry fitting it tighten everything up uh, and talk it all up correctly so you can get an accurate picture of how it actually is because otherwise you're just guessing in the dark really because once it's all tight and together is actually very different to how it is when it's all separate again to guys who know about transmissions of course this is nothing new um, this is all basic stuff really but if you're working on it and you haven't thought about it like me um, these, these things can be a problem and take a lot of time so anyway what we've managed to do then is get the whole thing together gasketed it up Everything is tightened and it's all put in correctly. So I'm pretty happy with it now. So um, let's have a look what we ended up with. We went for, in the back here, we've got two mil, uh, excuse me, 0 0.2 millimeters worth of shims. So that's what I chose now. Now I've gone for 0.2 and there's a bit of clearance because I'm still not entirely convinced by the requirement for shimming. I haven't been able to find anywhere online for other uh, gearboxes, people talking about what the correct uh, movement is here with the blocking ring and how much clearance you should have. Um, so there just seems to be no talk about it really. It seems to only be um, the guys with these Willys T84 transmissions and due to the French creating these shims um, is the reason why people are shimming them. But nobody seems to have a clear explanation of how much clearance you should have, what is correct and what is not. So because of that, I've just had a guess really. And I don't think it's a too bad a guess. So. Um, this is what we've ended up with. This is uh, on second. So I don't think it's excessive. It doesn't drag. It's not excessive and it's not too little. Um, I think that's pretty good. Let's rotate him around. You see it all turns nice and freely now. It's very, uh, it's very nice. So this is, uh, sorry, third and this is the second blocking ring. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It's not excessive. You can see that the, the uh, Dogs don't come too far forward, you know, they're not going to knock off or anything like that. This sits quite nicely in the centre of the, uh, the sleeve sits quite nicely in the centre of the hub when it's in neutral. So let's try and get it into um, neutral then. Back into neutral. We can see there's good movement on uh, either side. Doesn't slop around too much. You can see the uh, movement in the sleeve on the um, against the uh, fork. I mean, that's this is a new uh, sleeve and uh, fork. Well, the fork is actually the old one, but the fork, this fork had more meat on it um, where the sleeve runs actually, so it was tighter. So that's how much play you get in the sleeve there, and um, so it can rock back a little bit there. Looks pretty good to me. And then let's try and get you into. Uh, second then then it's a second so you can see how it sits the sleeve actually sits hard up against the uh, second gear here when it's in the detent um so let's have a look what have we got then there's a fair bit of play but it's not um it's nothing excessive i don't think it is more than it is on second 
so there is more play as we've discussed previously. You can see it comes out like that. But I think that's um, I don't think that's excessive, and I don't think it's too little really. So I'm pretty pleased with that, guys. So that's how I'm going to leave it. Um, the transmission, excuse me, the transfer case on the back as well has all been rebuilt, and that was a bit of a, a saga. Again, it all just comes down to accuracy, um, making sure that everything is done correctly, all tolerances correctly, just as it says in the tech manual. Um, fitting, trial fitting, taking it apart, putting it back together again. It's a process um, and getting the um, shimming on the rear, um, towards the rear in that direction over there is the um, uh, the uh, bearing cap which you've got to shim to get the clearance on the, bear, the rear uh, bearing. So that takes a little bit of work as well. So, um, but we've got there I think. So I'm quite happy with this now. It all shifts nicely when the top's on and uh, the transfer case is changing. Um, from ranges and things like that nice nice and easily as well you know it's fairly um, it's fairly tight still that's to be expected and it'll wear in a little bit but um, I think it's good guys so I think we've got there finally so the next thing we're going to move on to then which should be the really entertaining stuff is fitting it onto the Jeep so hopefully I can get that done over this weekend or attempt to get it done I've um, trial fitted the transmission onto the belt uh, onto the um, I changed the pilot bushing in the flywheel on the back of the Jeep on the engine. So um, I've trial fitted the new nose gear, the new input shaft with the at the other end is at this end is where the um, it runs in the pilot bushing and I've made sure that that's all reamed and correct and that slides in easy so that shouldn't be an issue. Um, so we'll move on to that then guys and hopefully we can have this thing running again in a couple of weeks or so. So guys, a little bit of an update to where we're at then. We've been very lucky so far because things have actually gone pretty well, which uh, my uh, helper has not arrived yet, so I've been doing this on my own. Um, so the main issue, firstly, is getting the transmission under the Jeep. So I've chopped it up on one side and put it on its uh, transmission stand back there, which keeps it quite high, but once it's on the transmission stand, you know, it's difficult to get it underneath the rails here, underneath the frame. So when it's chopped up, it works really nicely. So I slid it underneath, got it down there and then attached the bell housing there with the four bolts they went in fine so the bell housing was on that helps balance the whole uh the whole transmission transfer case assembly so it's easier to move around and then using the transmission jack and then a jack underneath the engine to lift it up i was just able to slot slot it in very straightforward there with the uh, the yoke and the um the output, excuse me, the clutch release bearing and the yoker on there, obviously, and it's all greased up and what have you. Um, so I was just able to slide it in, making sure that everything was aligned, obviously, because the trans, the uh, out input shaft to the transmission and the um, uh, flywheel and the clutch of the engine have to be perfectly aligned, obviously, for it easy, uh, easily for it to slip in together. Unfortunately, I've been really lucky, and um, just by balancing, lifting the engine up and lifting the transmission jack up, I've been able, able to easily slide, um, so far anyway, easily slide the um, transmission and uh, transfer onto the back of the engine. And rotating the engine is getting a rotation of the output shaft, so obviously it's all mated up nicely uh, and moving freely in the pilot bushing. So, I don't know, I think we've been pretty lucky so far. I've got to get the top bolts in next as well. Um, what can we see? No, we can't see them, they're up there. But the top bolts are difficult ones to do and I'll need uh, my helper's assistance when he uh, finally arrives because I can't do it single-handedly. Um, but uh, I'm hoping they should be reachable. Once the uh, transmission is then attached firmly to the engine, we can start putting in the transfer case levers, which as we know are difficult to get the slide that pin in. So um, we can drop the whole assembly down again, so it gives us some space and then we can slide the uh, levers in and hopefully they should go in fine. So um, that's where it stands at the moment. There's a cat that appeared to see us. There it is. Another one. Yeah, that's how it uh, is sitting so far guys and it's been, I think I've been very lucky. It's uh, worked out really nice. So hopefully it's going to continue like this. Um, we don't have any horrible surprises but you never know with old Jeeps, uh, they usually throw something at you. So let's get on with uh, getting those top bolts in. So guys, we've got some good news here. We've managed to uh, get the uh, lever, the shift lever in and the pin in fairly straightforward actually. That slotted in and that got done up, so that wasn't too bad. And then 
once those were in we were able to do if you remember uh, getting the pin in it, it hits on the hump here so you have to have the uh, transmission and transfer transmission and transfer case drop down before you can get the pin in but once that's done you can start to lift it up which is a bit more difficult unfortunately um, because it wants to go in off center and the, where the uh, engine mounts sit they naturally want to move it to one position but obviously it has to sit uh, on the position which is actually available to it or where the nuts and bolts line up but this has gone together pretty well actually um, we were able to line that up quite nicely so um, as you can see we've just got these last two here in so I'm going to put the jack underneath here and lift him up and then we can be able to slot those two in so we'll just do that now then so guys we uh, got it all together actually now and what we had to do then is it wasn't the uh, position of the cross member which was the issue it's that this hanger actually of course is only very light gauge metal and they can bend and move out of the way they've got a natural position they want to sit in and the natural position of this one was a little bit too far out on either side so all we did then was uh, while Tom pushed the nut I just put a bit of wood on there and gave it a tap and it just pushed this back so that we could put the uh, bolt through but now they've all gone in together and everything's lined up and uh, yeah it's all looking pretty good all pretty nicely lined up and everything everything's on we'll give it a turnover now and see if the engine is all freely rotating and everything which I should hope it is uh, you can see on the front there the um, front output has got a different style to um, uh, the one with the pin in it it's got a um, a nut with a uh, it's a sort of a locking nut on the end of it it must be a 1950s I suppose British or French manufacturer clutch output shaft there um, but um, it, uh, it works pretty well there so that's why you can't see the locking pin going through that nut there but um, otherwise really guys I'm pretty pleased with how it all went together it wasn't terrible terribly difficult and it wasn't terribly easy either either so I think it's pretty much a pretty good job so far now we're going to find out the thing I've forgotten or it's not going to rotate or something ridiculous like that 